Hey, that's what I saw when I came into the studio the other day. There's a lady doing football war squats. And she had a phone and she was texting while she was doing the football war squat, which is an interesting exercise in itself. You know, if you can text while you're doing the exercise, then maybe it's not really that effective exercise. So let's have a look at the fit ball squat. There's a lot of people think, hey, this is really good for teaching a squat, and it's really good for functional stability in the core and all that stuff which you hear. So let's have a look at this from an anatomical and a biomechanical point of view. First of all, if you look at the uh, fit ball squat, you have a ball, naturally big ball of air. You put your feet out in front and you lean back onto the ball. So the instability is on the on your back. Now from a functional point of view, look at function. I don't, I don't understand where you need stability against the wall. But like maybe if you're in a bar and you've had too many drinks and you keep falling off the wall, maybe that's probably a good functional exercise. But what part of life do you lean back to squat down? Like if I go to the toilet, for example, to do a number two, I don't have a ball on the back of the toilet so I can squat down to the toilet. What I do is I actually squat down. So from a functional point of view, by mechanically, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. Because what it does, it takes your center of gravity and it puts it backwards. And then you put your knees out in front of your line of load. So your line of load behind your knees, when ideally from a by a mechanical point of view, the purpose of the strength and the exercise, you want to make sure all your joints are in alignment with the load. That way you can absorb and distribute the load throughout all the joints equally rather than sticking the knees out in front. And what you're basically doing with your knees out in front and the load behind is you're creating what you call shearing forces across the knee that pull the patella back up against the femur and increase the patellofemoral compression forces or the grinding of the patella against the femur. Now because you can't lift a very heavy load, it's not going to cause too much damage because you've got this instability against the wall, which is really has no functional application whatsoever. Where you really where you want stability is your feet on the ground, not your back in the wall. Because you're not trying to work the back of your wall joint, you're trying to you know, work the joints that put, attach you to the ground. So from a functional point of view, it's very dysfunctional. What part of life do you do that? Do I have to walk around every day with a ball? If I happen to drop something, oh my gosh, I'll get the ball out so I can squat down and pick it up. No, because when I do a normal squatting action, I don't lean back to squat down. If anything, I lean forward. If I drop something, I lean forward to pick it up. I don't lean back to pick it up. So how about you start training the squat the way it's designed to be performed in an exercise point of view and also from a functionality point of view. So you keep all your joints in alignment with the line of load, the center of gravity in your midline, and then distribute the load through all the joints equally by just releasing all the joints by keeping the center of gravity right through the midline of your body. That way, everything is distributed equally through the stresses through the body, plus it's also very functional. So if you really want to do a great exercise for squatting, or learn how to squat. Well, squat. If you want to learn how to squat, squat. Don't do a dysfunctional exercise in a form of a squat which is not applicable and not biomechanically or anatomically related to try to do an exercise uh, which is more functional. So you're better off grabbing some dumbbells, yes, and just doing a good controlled functional squat. And if you don't know how to squat, then practice squatting. Don't divert your inability to squat by doing an exercise which isn't really a squat. It's a football wall squat, which isn't a real squat. I don't know what it is, it's leaning up against the wall. So my suggestion is get the ball and do what balls are designed for. Keep them away, go and do the proper exercise correctly, and when you can do it functionally correctly and technically correctly, then add a load and then get stronger at it. And if you want to add a bit more stability, turn that squat maybe into a, a split lunge and a step lunge, and maybe even a step up if you want more stability from a unilateral point of view. And that would be no capital.